I love the uh, process of academia, the process of learning, the acquisition of knowledge. Uh, I think the key to empowerment is education. Um, we cannot be empowered if we're not uh, educated, and I would like to see more of um, our people, that is African American community, um, comprised of the churches and other elements within the community, begin to empower ourselves by educating ourselves. So I think it's critical for the success of um, our children, our antecedents, did everything they could, and we must do the same thing for those who will be coming our legacy. That's a great question. I would have to say, I don't think it's one. Um, my, my world history teacher going back to uh, high school, um, Miss Garvin, and um, um, my uh, English professor uh, in, at the university, um, my uh, seminarian professor. Uh, I guess depending on the evolution where, where you are as you evolve and as you become, um, your eyes are enlightened to uh, different perspectives, different world views. Um, I think it's critical to have a biblical world view, but we should also have the intelligence to know what other world views uh, are out there so we can better understand human nature and understand the various uh, diversities of cultures and then be able to indeed see them through the eyes, through the prism of, of scripture. Um, so. I'll, I don't really have one person. I've just been impacted by so many people. Then, of course, when you were raised in the kind of home life uh, that I was, when my mother was an educator, so my mother made me do book reports more than my uh, school teachers did. Uh, quick story, in 1968, sitting in the living room, actually the bedroom, my parents' home with my uh, sister Sherry on the floor watching television. Uh, I'll never forget it. And uh, the, the show was interrupted by Walter Conkright uh, saying that Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. had just been shot and killed. My mother screamed. She was in the kitchen. She started screaming. I was like six years old. And um, I wanted to know why my mother was so upset. And who was this man? You know, who was this big black face on, on the picture? on the screen there. So the next day she took me to the Amityville Public Library to take out every book on Martin Luther King Jr. Now this is 1968, so they only had like two or three books. So we took all two or three books out, made me write a book report on uh, the life of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., drum major for justice. And the following week my father was in revival at a church in Westbury. And one night before he preached, he said, I want my son to come to the pulpit and write and read his book report that he gave about Martin Luther King Jr. And uh, I've actually been in pulpits ever since that night. I think it's because the, and I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to say this, but I think it's because they're not properly understood. Um, there's not enough African-American teachers who understand the plight and conditions of, of our young people. Um, the world has changed, obviously, and the world is continuing to change at accelerated pace. Um, and I think we need more people who look like us in the actual school system that's able to go the extra mile if, it's, if needed, who understands the, the, all the other aspects that come into education. It's difficult for a child to um, be focused in school if they're hungry, um, if they have uh, domestic issues going on, um, and all these tangents that happen that have a direct impact on a child's capacity to be focused uh, and to really see learning as a positive, not, not a drudgery, but something that is positive, that, that's even fun, uh, depending on what age you know, bracket that, that you're in. And so I think we need to have more educators, African-American educators. And that kind of goes back to uh, empowering our people by educating our people. 
I would give every teacher in America a raise. <laughs> I would, I literally, I would pour as many resources as possible and even find new innovative ways to make sure that every school system was functioning at maximum productivity so every child had access to the resources that are necessary to prepare them to have an effective, productive life. And uh, I'm, I'm sure our nation can, on every level, whether it be the federal level, state level, local level, can do more to provide resources, particularly to underprivileged children, because in certain, obviously, school districts where they have more affluence and wealth, children have access to, to so many things that put them on a certain level, get them a certain stand, it gives them a certain head start than those in underprivileged communities. I would definitely develop better study habits. Um, I was somewhat classified as an as a, a student, but I really didn't learn how to study until uh, I went to college. So I kind of breezed my way uh, excellent student all through junior high school, high school. You know, back in the day, things they said came easy. So things came easy for me. Um, and then when I got to the freshman level of college and discovered that you just couldn't, you know, the night before read, you know, 50,000 chapters to be prepared. I'm like, oh, I better sit down and really develop. So thank God I had some people who were very instrumental uh, in getting me through that collegiate element. But uh, the, the academic from uh, elementary into junior high school, that was relatively um, not a problem for me. So I think I probably, if I had to go back, I would have taken it just a little bit more uh, in a serious uh, content, even though I got good grades. So um, that kind of goes back to this whole merit system. Just because you get good grades really doesn't mean you're really acquiring uh, the acquisition of knowledge. You just know how to take tests and, and, and pass them. So I think there's a difference that I would really pay more attention to. My name is Frank Anthon White. It's my honor to pastor the Zion Cathedral Church of God in Christ in Freeport, New York. And you are watching Young Faces Smiling Incorporated.